Of the people on this tape are community volunteers or students and staff from the Salinas Adult School who have volunteered their time. Some of their names and personal information has been changed to protect their privacy and to help make the video easy to understand. The INS citizenship interview usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Most of the questions you will be asked are taken from the 10-page N-400 citizenship application form that you mailed in. You should keep a copy, take it to your citizenship class, and study it carefully. The reason that INS asks so many personal questions is first, to make sure you meet all of the eligibility requirements. Second, to see if you can understand and speak basic English. Third, to find out if there are any changes since you mailed your citizenship application and fourth, to see if you are telling the truth. Additionally, you will be asked from 3 to 25 questions from the INS list of 100 history and government questions. You may also be asked to read one or more sentences or questions in English. Finally, you will be asked to write one or two sentences of dictation. In some INS offices, you are asked personal questions first. In others, you are asked government and history questions first. Although the interview is oral, you don't need to speak English perfectly in order to pass your test. Also, if you have any disability such as vision or hearing problems, you may be entitled to request an accommodation or disability waiver. There are some exceptions to the English requirement. If you are over 50 and have had your green card for more than 20 years, or if you are over 55 and have had your green card for more than 15 years, you can ask to be interviewed in your first language. Also, if you are over 65 and have been a permanent resident for more than 20 years, the INS will select 10 questions from a list of only 25 history and government questions and you must answer six correctly. The interview may take longer than 10 or 15 minutes if any of these things apply to you. You want to change your name. You were arrested. You are divorced. You or your spouse have been married before. Mistakes are found on your N-400 form. You have made changes in your address, work, or family situation. Other information you provided on your N-400 application form has changed. We will begin with a typical short interview, and I will play the role of an INS examiner. Sophia Long? Yes. Please come with me. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you're coming from Salinas? Yes, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Sophia, is this your first citizenship interview? Yes, yes it is. Okay, please come on in. Okay, I need you to stand by the chair and raise your right hand. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Please have a seat. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And um, I need to see your green card, your driver's license, and a passport if you have one. Sure, I got it. Okay, yeah. very good. That looks excellent. Thank you so much. Um, okay, and do you still have the same address? Yes, I do. All right. And what is your phone number with the area code? My area code is 831. Mm -hmm. My phone number is 449-3578. Okay. And have you been out of the U.S. since you became a permanent resident? Please, can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, after getting your green card, have you been out of the country? Yes, I have. Okay. And when was the last time you left? Um, December 18, 1999. Okay. And about how long were you gone? For about two weeks. Okay, good. And are you married? Yes, I am. And how many times have you been married? Oh, one time. Okay. And how many children do you have? Two. Okay. Were they born in the United States? Yes. Are you working now? Yes, I am. And where do you work? I am working in the fresh market. 
Okay, and how long have you worked there? Uh, for three years. Okay. Have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Have you ever been a habitual drunkard? No, I haven't. Okay. Have you ever helped an illegal alien to enter the U.S.? No, I haven't. Okay. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? No, I haven't. Okay. Do you pay your taxes every Yes, year? I do. Okay. And have you ever been arrested? No, I haven't. Okay. Do you believe in the U.S. Constitution? Yes, I do. Okay. And can you tell me what is the Constitution? It's the highest law. Okay. And are you willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States if the law requires it? Yes, I am. Okay. And are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, now I'm going to ask you some questions about history and government. Okay. okay. How many branches of government are there? Three. Okay. And do you know who the first president of the United States was? George Washington. Okay. And who was president during the Civil War? Abraham Lincoln. Good. Uh, what do we celebrate on the 4th of July? Independence Day. Good. And what do the stars in our flag represent? The 50th state. Okay. And now I'm going to ask you to write a sentence that I'm going to dictate to you. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Could you write for me here at the bottom, um, I love to live in America. Okay, that's great. And congratulations, you've passed your test. And I need you to sign your photo um, here on the certificate. And if you could sign your first name in cursive on this side and your last name on the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how you sign your name. Yes. Okay, very good. And we will be calling you for the Oath of Allegiance ceremony in somewhere between one month and three months. You'll okay. get a letter. Okay, thank you very much. Good job. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. To pass your INS interview for citizenship, you need to be prepared to answer all of the questions from the N-400 form and any related questions. After going through an airport-style security checkpoint, you will be waiting to be called by an INS examiner from a waiting area. Before we start with the interview, let's make sure you can make it down the hall. Guadalupe okay. Colonel. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Please come with me. Okay. So, where are you from? I'm from Mexico. Okay. So, how are you today? Fine. Great. This is my office. Oh. Please put your purse on the middle chair. Please remain standing and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, I do. Please have a seat. Thank you. May I see your green card and your driver's license or California ID card? Yes, here you are. Good. Thank you. Carlos Ruiz? Yes. Are you are Carlos Ruiz? Yes, I am. Ah, follow me, please. Okay. How was the traffic today? Mm, it was pretty good. And how long did it take you to get here? Uh, about an hour and a half. Why are you here today? 
So you want to become a U.S. citizen? Oh, I see. Well, follow me here. Okay. Please uh, stand by my desk and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Please be seated. Thank you. I need to see your alien registration card, a photo ID of your driver's license, or your driver's license. Okay. Here you are. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. To review, an INS officer will call your name and you must stand and go with him or her. The officer may not pronounce your name correctly, so you should be listening carefully. Usually he or she will say, follow me or come with me. But sometimes the officer just starts off to his or her office. You are expected to follow. Sometimes there will be conversation questions in the hallway before you get to the office. They may include questions about everyday topics such as the weather, how you got here today, or why you are here. There may be no questions or just, how are you today? It is important to remember that they are testing your ability to speak and understand English. You may be asked to open or close the door, to take off your hat, to put your papers on the chair on the left, and so on. In most cases, you will be asked to remain standing and raise your right hand to promise to tell the truth. You will be asked to show your green card and your driver's license. You could be asked to show your passport and or your social security card. Have these cards ready to take out. Remember, if you don't understand a question, ask the examiner to please repeat the question. Now we will go through all of the sections of the N-400 citizenship application. Personal information, residence, work, absences, trips out of the United States, family, membership and moral character, taxes and arrests, and allegiance to the United States. First you will hear two or three people responding to questions from these areas. Then it will be your turn. Practice what you will say if you are asked any of our questions. What is your full name? Uh, it's Eva Maria Martinez Lopez. And do you want to change your name? No, I do not. Do you still have the same address? Yes, I do. And is your what is your phone number with the area code? Area code 831-449-2140. And what is your date of birth? It's 42957. And what is your social security number? is five five zero eight nine eight five zero zero. And how long have you been a permanent resident? Twenty two years. Good, thank you. Do you still live at one four four North Hebron Street in Salinas? No, I don't. What is your current address? My current address twelve oh six Gardner Avenue in Salinas. What is your zip code? My zip code is 93905. When did you move to your new address? January 1st, 1999. When did you become a lawful permanent resident? August 18, 1984. Where were you born? In Mexico. How tall are you? 5'3". Thank you. Okay, now it's your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? What is your full name? Do you want to change your name? Do you still have the same address? How long have you lived at your current address? What is your date of birth? What is your phone number with the area code?
When were you admitted as a lawful permanent resident? Now let's look at residence questions. You were asked to list on your N-400 application all of your addresses during the last five years. Here are two examples of questions you might be asked. What is your current address? 1314 Tampico Avenue. Is that a house or apartment? It's a house. How long have you lived at your current address? For two years. What was your previous address? 916 Del Monte Avenue. How long did you live there? For seven years. How long have you lived in California? Uh, 29 years. Have you lived in any other states? Yes. In what states? A Arizona. Do you intend to reside permanently in the United States? Yes, I do. Now it's your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? What is your current address? Is that a house or apartment? How long have you lived there? What was your previous address? Do you intend to live permanently in the United States? Now it's time to prepare for the work section of the N-400 application. If you have changed jobs or started to work after mailing in your N-400, take a check stub with you so the INS examiner can write down the name and address of your new employer. Be prepared to tell the INS the date you started work at the new company. If you are not working, be prepared to discuss your source of income and to answer questions about your husband or wife's employment. You may also be asked about receiving general assistance or other forms of welfare. You are entitled to receive any government assistance that you are eligible for as long as you have not given any false information in order to obtain benefits. Here are three sample dialogues. Do you still work for the same company? Yes, I do. How long have you worked there? Six years. Okay. What is the name of your employer? Fresh Express. And what do you do in your job? I check up the quality of the salads. Quality of the salads, good. Is your husband working? Yes, he is. Okay, and what does he do? He is sanitation manager. Sanitation manager, okay, great. Are you working now, Letty? Yes. Where do you work? A.M. P.M. What is your position there? Cashier. How many years have you worked there? One year. Where did you work before that? At 24 Hour Fitness Center. What did you do there? Um, I used to work at the Child Care Center. Do you still work at Escamilla and Sons? No, I don't. Who is your new employer? Mm, Ma'am Bucking. What is the address? Here's my magic stuff. Thank you. Thank you. When did you start work there? Um, November 15th, last year. Is your husband employed? Excuse me. Can you please, uh, can you repeat, please? Is your husband working? No, he is retired. Thank you. Okay. 
Now is your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? Do you still work for the same company? Are you working now? What is the name of your employer? How long have you worked there? What do you do? Very good. Okay, let's try some other work questions. Are you working now? Does your spouse work? What kind of work does he or she do? Who was your last employer? How long did you work there? Very good. The next section is about your absences out of the United States. Although the emphasis on the current N-400 application is on trips during the last five years, you are asked to list every absence of 24 hours or more since you got your green card. During the interview, you will probably be asked to give the date of your last trip, your most recent absence. You should know the exact day you left and the exact day you returned. If your application was not filled out correctly, you can get a copy of page 4 of the new N-400 and fill it out with all of the correct information and include any new trips you made after filling out the application form. That way you can hand the list to the INS examiner when he or she asks you about your trips. Warning. During the last five years, you cannot have left for more than six months on any one trip and you cannot have left for a total of more than 30 months over those five years. More importantly, you should never have left the U.S. for more than a year after getting your green card. If you did leave for more than a year and the INS finds out, you may be denied your citizenship and you run the risk of being deported because you violated your permanent resident status agreement with the INS. If you have any possible problems, Consult an immigration attorney or nonprofit legal aid group before applying and especially before going to your interview. In California, you can contact Catholic Charities or California Rural Legal Assistance for help. Let's hear two examples of questions about your trips out of the United States. How many times have you been out of the United States since you became a permanent resident? Four times. When was the last time you left? November 26, 1999. When did you return? January 2, 2000. What was the reason for your trip? Vacation. Have you ever been out of the United States for more than six months? No, I haven't. Since becoming a permanent resident, have you been out of the United States? Yes, I have. Since you filed your petition for naturalization, have you been out of the United States? Yes, I have. When was your last trip out of the U.S.? June 6, 1998. How long were you gone? For three weeks. What was your destination? Ica, Peru, South America. Now is your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? How many times have you been out of the United States since you got your alien registration card? Since you mailed your application for citizenship, have you been out of the United States? When was the last time you left the country? When did you return? What was the reason for your trip? Had you ever been out of the United States for more than six months? Very good.
The next section has questions about your family. Part 8 of the N400 has questions about your husband or wife, and Part 9 of the N400 has questions about your children. If you are single and have no children, you will only have one or two questions. When asking about your children, they are referring to all children, including those that have died, adopted children, and children living anywhere in the world. If you or your spouse have been married more than one time, you need to fill out Section F and or G. At the time of the interview, you should bring your divorce certificate and the marriage certificate to your present spouse. You should be prepared to answer questions about your past and present spouses. If you married someone or had children with someone before their divorce was final, a simple and truthful explanation may be all you need, but you should consult an attorney. Are you single or married? I am married. Does your wife live with you? Yes. And how many times have you been married? Uh, only one time. And your wife, how many times has she been married? Uh, only one time, too. How many children do you have? I have uh, three children. Does your wife have a permanent resident card? Uh, no, she is a, a citizen. OK, thanks. All right, Maria, what is your marital status? I am married. You're, you're married, okay. And how many times have you been married? Two times. All right. And when did you get the divorce from the first husband? January 16, 1972. All right. And he was also a permanent resident? He never came to the United States. Okay. How many children do you have? Five. Five. And they were all born in the United States? Two in Mexico and three in the United States. Okay. Alrighty. And how old are they? Luis is 13, Andrea is 12, Juan is 7, Symmetra is 6, and Jesus is 1. Okay. Valeria, are you still married to Victor Mora? Yes, I am. Is he a permanent resident or a U.S. citizen? He is a permanent resident. And you have two children, is that right? Yes. Where were they born? Excuse me? When or where? Where? In the United States. Do they live with you? Yes, they do. Now it's your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? What is your marital status? How many times have you been married? How many children do you have? Were they born in the United States? Do they live with you? Is your husband or wife a permanent resident? Very good. Now we come to the section involving memberships and moral character. If you answer yes to any of these questions, you should talk to a lawyer before mailing your application. Especially serious are questions about helping illegal aliens to cross the border into the U.S selling or smuggling drugs, and deportation. Page 8 of the N-400 has a lot of difficult vocabulary. Although it's easy to practice saying, no, I haven't, to most of Part 10, the INS examiner wants to make sure that you understand all of the questions and that you are not just guessing the answer. Ask your teacher, a friend, or a family member to translate these questions into your language if you don't completely understand them. That way, you will be better prepared to answer them. Also, it's important to know that all of these questions are routine questions. Sometimes students take them very personally, especially the question about prostitution. Remember, they can ask any and every question that you answered on the N-400 application form. Occasionally, the INS examiner will ask you to explain a word to them. Be prepared to do so. Let's look at one example. Have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? No, I have not. 
Have you ever been a prostitute or procured anyone for prostitution? No. Have you ever sold or smuggled controlled substances, illegal drugs, or narcotics? No, I haven't. Have you ever been married to more than one person at the same time? No. Have you ever gambled illegally or received income from illegal gambling? No, I have not. Have you ever given any false or misleading testimony to any government official while applying for any immigration benefit or to prevent deportation or removal? No, I have not. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? Excuse me? Have you ever told anyone that you are a U.S. citizen? No, I haven't. Have you ever voted in the United States? No, I have not. Did you vote in Turkey? Yes, I have. Are you going to vote when you become a citizen? Yes, I will. Very good. Have you ever persecuted any person because of race, religion, national origin, membership, or political opinion? No, I haven't. Have you ever been a member or been associated with a terrorist organization? No. Have you ever advocated the overthrow of any government by force or violence? No. Have you ever helped anyone enter or try to enter the United States illegally? No. Have you ever been associated in any way with the Nazi government of Germany? No. Have you ever been declared legally incompetent or been confined to a mental institution within the last five years? No, I haven't. Have you ever been deported? No. Did you register with the, with the Selective Service? Uh, what was it? Selective Service. It's our draft board. Uh, no, I was too old. Okay, okay. Are you a member of any organization or club? Uh, yes, I am. What group do you belong to? Uh, Team Stars. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's your turn to answer some questions. Are you ready? Have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Have you ever been a habitual drunkard or had problems with alcohol? Have you ever been a trafficker in narcotic drugs or marijuana? Have you ever been a prostitute or procured anyone for prostitution? Have you ever claimed in writing or in any other way to be a U.S. citizen? Have you ever helped an alien to enter the U.S. illegally? Have you ever voted in the United States. Are you going to vote when you become a citizen? That's it. Very good. One of the questions you just heard was about deportation. The INS requests your original green card file when you submit your application and they have it on the desk during your interview. If you lie about being deported, you may fail the interview and have to go to a second interview before INS can determine if you pass your test. You could also be denied your citizenship if you lie under oath about being deported. In one of the last dialogues, you heard a question about selective service. There are a few questions about military service that will only be asked to male applicants. If you are a man and when you got your green card, you were between 18 and 26 years old, you should have registered with the Selective Service. If you got your permanent residency card after you were 26, you can say, I was too old. If you were told that it was your responsibility to register and you signed an agreement that you would register during your permanent residency process and you didn't register, this could be a problem. You should talk to an immigration attorney or someone from a nonprofit immigration assistance agency. Now we will look at some questions related to taxes and arrests. If you didn't pay your taxes one year or more than one year and need to do so, 
you should pay before going to your interview and bring proof that you have paid or have an agreement with the IRS to pay money each month. If you have been arrested at any time in the United States for any reason, we strongly recommend that you speak to a lawyer before mailing your N-400 application for citizenship. Additionally, you will need to go to the court where your hearing took place or where you were ordered to pay a fine or perform community service and get what is called the disposition of the case. This official court document includes the nature of the offense and the outcome of the case. You cannot get an acceptable document from the DMV, the police, the sheriff, or the highway patrol. The paper must come from the court. If you don't take it to the interview or send it with your N-400 application, you will be asked to bring it within a short period of time and your case will be delayed. This includes false arrests in which you did nothing wrong, but the police confused you with another person. You were still arrested and you need to tell the truth. When your fingerprints are taken by the INS, they go to the FBI in Washington, D.C., where they have a complete record of any problems you have had with the police while in the United States. Applicants have been denied citizenship because they lied about their arrest under oath or did not provide all of the information the INS asked for. Telling the truth is extremely important to the INS. If you have been arrested, you may be asked questions such as when, where, the offense, to explain what happened, and to tell the outcome of the case. Practice these questions with your teacher, friend, or family member. For legal advice and help with your case, contact a nonprofit immigration assistance agency or an immigration attorney. You can contact the INS for a list of the Board of Immigration Appeals accredited agencies. Do you pay your taxes every year? Yes. Do you owe any federal taxes? Um, excuse me, what's on? Um... Do you need to pay money in taxes to the U.S. government? Oh, no. Okay. Have you ever been arrested? No. Have you ever been stopped by the police? Um, yes. How many tickets have you received? One. Okay. What was the offense? Speeding. Did you pay the fine? Yes. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you pay your taxes every year? Yes, I do. When did you file your last federal income tax return? In March last year. Okay. Since becoming a lawful permanent resident, have you ever failed to file a required federal, state, or local income tax return? Uh, no. Do you owe any federal, state, or local taxes that are overdue? Uh, no. Okay. Have you ever been in jail? No. Have you ever been cited, charged, or convicted of a crime or offense? Well, a long time ago I received a ticket. Okay, and what was the reason? It was for my overspeeding and my brother, he had an open can beer in the back seat of the car. Okay. Did you pay a fine? Yes, I did. When did you receive the ticket? Excuse me, when? When did you receive the ticket? In March 1995. And where did you receive the ticket? In Denver. Okay. Were you ever put on probation? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's your turn. Are you ready? Do you pay your taxes every year? Do you owe any federal taxes? When was the last time you filed your federal income tax return? Have you ever been arrested? Have you ever been stopped by the police? How many tickets have you received? Fine. Finally, we come to Part 10, Section H, Oath Requirements. On the N-400 form, there are six questions which should all have a yes answer. 
If you are a member of a religious group, such as the Jehovah's Witnesses, you may answer no to the questions about bearing arms or swearing allegiance, but you must take an official letter from your church stating that you are a member in good standing and the reasons why you cannot bear arms or take the oath of allegiance. Here are some questions you may be asked. We have added questions that ask for related information. Do you believe in the United States Constitution? Yes, I do. Well, what is the United States Constitution? It is the supreme law of the land. Are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes, I am. And do you know what an oath is? Yes, I promise. Are you willing to perform non-combatant services in the armed forces if the law requires it? Yes, I am. Thank you. You're very welcome. Do you believe in our form of government? Uh, yes, I do. What form of government do we have? Uh, democracy and a republic. If the law requires it, are you willing to bear arms on behalf of the U.S.? Yes, I am. Do you understand to bear arms? What does it mean to bear arms? Yes. Uh, if uh, there is a war, I can be a soldier and uh, fight for the United States. Are you willing to perform work of national importance under civilian direction? Yes, I am. Now it's your turn. Are you ready? Do you believe in the U.S. Constitution? What is the U.S. Constitution? Do you believe in our form of government? What form of government do we have? If the law requires it, are you willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States? Are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Do you know what an oath is? Very good. Congratulations, you have finished answering questions related to the N-400 application form. Now we will give you an opportunity to answer some of the 100 INS Government and History questions that may be asked during the interview. This video only gives you 30 of the 96 or 100 official INS Government and History questions. Be sure to get a complete list and study all of the questions before you go to the interview. Try to give the answer yourself before the applicant speaks. In the first practice dialogue, the INS gives the applicant a list of questions to read and then give an answer to. In the other practice dialogues, the INS asks the questions orally and the applicant gives an answer. Now I'd like you to answer some questions about U.S. history and government. Here's a list of questions. I want you to read each one and tell me the answer. Who is the President of the United States today? George Bush. Who makes the lab for U.S.? The Congress. How many U.S. Senators are there from each state? Two. Who are the two U.S. Senators from California? Barbara Baxen and Diana Feinstein. 
From what country did we get our independence? England. Who was Martin Luther King Jr.? An important civil rights leader. Who say give me liberty or give me death? Patrick Henry. Why is a capital at your state? Sacramento. Thank you. Okay, Maria, I'm going to ask you some questions pertaining to U.S. government and history, okay? What are the three branches of the U.S. government? Legislative, executive, and judicial. Good. In what month do we elect the president? In November. Okay. What are the first ten amendments of the Constitution called? Bill of the Rights. Yes. If the president dies, who takes his place? The vice president. Okay. What is the name of our vice president today? Dick Cheney. Right. Okay. What are the 49th and 50th states? Alaska and Hawaii. What is the supreme law in the United States? The Constitution. Okay. Can it be changed? Yes, with amendments. Okay. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. Good. Okay, now I'd like to ask you some questions about our government. Can you um, tell me the colors of the flag, the United States flag? A red, white, and blue. What color are the stars on the flag? It's white. Can you tell me what the Congress is? Is the Senate and the House representative? Very good, very good. Who's the governor of California? Grace Davis. And what what is our national anthem? The Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> very good, very good. Who is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court? Uh, William Rehnquist. Can you name a, a few of the 13 original colonies? Yes, Virginia, uh, Maryland, uh, Georgia, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Delaware, Arrow Island. Oh, wow. yeah. Very good. Thank you. Finally, we will ask you to write some sentences. The INS usually asks the applicant to write one sentence, but in some cases you will be asked to write two sentences. Listen carefully. Okay, I would like to dictate a sentence to you and have you write it in English for us. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I would like you to write, I love my family. Very good, very good, thank you. Okay. Rosalio, I will need to dictate a sentence to you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. What color is your car, Rosalio? My car is blue. Okay, and can you write that for me on this piece of paper? Yes. That's very good. So, okay, thank you very much. You're Elsa, now I'm going to ask you to write a sentence for me. Here's a piece of paper and a pen. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Please write, all citizens have the right to vote.
all citizens. All citizens have the right to vote. Have the okay. right to vote. To vote. Thank you. You're welcome. In order to pass your interview, you have to show that you can speak, understand, read, and write English. You also have to show knowledge of U.S. history and government. Finally, you have to have a good moral character. If you fail your test because you couldn't speak or understand enough English, or you weren't able to answer the history and government questions, or you didn't write the dictated sentence correctly, you will be given a second chance. You will only be tested on the section or sections you failed. Normally, the second interview is scheduled within four months of the first one, so you will have to study hard during this time. Appeals can be made, and a third opportunity is often granted. Otherwise, the applicant has to start all over and file a new application and pay a new application fee. Some final comments. In the dialogues we have presented, we have modeled short answers such as, yes, I do, no, I haven't, and others. During the interview, you will probably be very nervous. You can respond yes or no if the short answers are difficult for you. If you can give a short answer like yes I am, it shows you know English and it's more formal and shows respect to the listener. You could also say yes sir or yes ma'am. Another thing we haven't talked about is your appearance. Think of your interview as an interview for the job you have always dreamed of. Men should wear a suit and tie and women should wear dressy clothes. This sends the message that U.S. citizenship is really important to you, and this day is one of the most important days of your life. Some applicants have arrived at the INS office in dirty work clothes. This creates a really bad impression. If citizenship means a lot to you, plan to wear something really nice. Although most of the INS examiners are friendly and fair, Sometimes applicants have a bad experience with a particular examiner. If you are being treated rudely, INS wants you to request to speak to a supervisor at that moment. You would say, excuse me, I need to speak to a supervisor. When the supervisor comes, you can say, I would like to have a different examiner, please. It takes a lot of courage, but not only do you benefit, but you are, you are helping all of the other applicants that come after you because now the supervisor knows that a particular examiner is rude to the applicants. Have a friend, classmate, or family member stay in the waiting area and be ready to support you if you have a bad experience. Finally, after studying hard and practicing with many different people, a really important thing to do is to remember to breathe and visualize yourself being congratulated for passing your test. Being relaxed and thinking positively will really help you. Remember that it is okay to miss one or two questions. Try to get a good night's sleep and ask for support from the person that goes with you to your interview. Good luck! We know you can do it!